Hi, I'm Natalie of the Garden Club. Today we're going to hear from Carol Penfield. She's co-owner and program director of the Chatham Health and Swim Club. She's a certified personal trainer, aquatics instructor, and a nutritionist. And today she's going to give us some exercise tips to help us hardworking gardeners prevent injuries. Hello, my name is Carol Penfield and I'm from the Chatham Health and Swim Club and I'm here to share with you some exercise tips for gardeners. First of all, it's important to get out in the garden and warm up first before you start in with your activities. So a couple ideas that I have for you are as follows. First, you want to get your legs warmed up a little bit. You can do a few knee bends, shallow and then deepening them a little bit. Then warming up the torso with some twists, right and left and then getting your shoulders warmed up with a few back strokes. Up, back, and down. And then once you're ready to go after your warm up, you can move on to your next activity. So next I want to show you some ideas of stretching and strengthening exercises that you can do to prevent injury so that you can enjoy more hours in the garden. The first is that with the neck and shoulders, many people have issues there because we're often stooped over in the garden like so. So keeping the chin in, the shoulders back, my favorite exercise is as follows. Placing your arms out in front, you're going to pull your elbows back as far as you can, opening up the chest, rotating the hands up like you're being held up at the bank, then the elbows drop down towards the back pocket. So that move you could do quite a few times. Rotate the hands and all the way down. So arms up in front, elbows pull back. Go ahead, try it with me. Rotate and down. Arms up in front, pull back and rotate. I'll also show it to you from the side. So trying to keep that nine pounds ahead from being way out here, you want the chin in, shoulders back. Arms come up, shoulder height. Elbows pull back as far as you can. Arms rotate and then the elbows drop down towards the back pocket. Again, arms in front, elbows pull back, rotate the hands up, elbows drop down, and one more, arms out in front, elbows pull back, rotate, and down and around. And that's my favorite exercise. That can be done standing or sitting. The next one I recommend should be done on all fours. If you're unable to get down onto all fours, you can do this in a chair or standing. So you're going to keep your hands underneath the base of your shoulders, your knees underneath the base of your hips. And this is a great core strengthening exercise. You're going to lift one leg up and back, trying to keep the hip neutral, trying not to lift it. And the opposite arm reaches out and up with the thumb lifted. And you try to hold for three to five seconds, pulling the navel into the spine. And then return back down. Then the other side, left leg comes up and back, opposite arm reaches out and up, navel pulls in, hold for three to five seconds. I recommend doing this three to five times, it will help strengthen your back and your abdominals. And then the next area that's of concern is your arms and your wrists. Very important to try to ward off tendonitis of the elbow. So what I recommend is this stretch. You're going to place one arm out in front of you, make a fist. You're going to drop the fist down and you're going to gently tug that hand towards you as you straighten out the elbow and that will help stretch out the forearm here. Second stretch is to rotate the palm up, taking the extended fingers down and back and straightening the elbow again. This will help stretch the inner part of the elbow and also the wrist. And then once you're done circling it out a little bit just to loosen it up and that will help prevent any tendonitis of the elbow. It's important to keep really good body mechanics so that you don't hurt your back or bother your knees with your activity. So first of all, you want to face the direction you're working in, and as you place the rake, you can also pull it right towards you so that you're avoiding a bend and a twist. If you're shoveling, you're going to scoop up the dirt or loam. Your feet will follow the shovel as you place the dirt and loam down into the second place. First, it's important to have a pad down that you can place your knees on. That's one option if you're going to be kneeling for a long period of time. You also can use a crate or a box or something with a pad on top. What this allows you to do while you're doing your weeding or planting, this allows you to support your back and take the pressure off your wrists and your hands as you do gardening or planting. Another alternative is if you have a fitness ball, these are very handy in the garden. 
and you can use this instead. It gives you a little bit more mobilization around in your, in your garden bed, again taking the pressure off your hands. And lastly, this is a wonderful tool. It has a nice wide grip so that you're not clenching your hands too much. It also allows you to keep a good linear positioning of your wrist and your thumb to help decrease your risk for tendonitis of the hand. I just share with you some of my favorite gardening tips and I hope you have many years of healthy gardening in the future.